Hi, today I want to talk about this topic, the efficient frontier capital market line, the tendency portfolio and the sharp ratio. Those are very important elements in the modern portfolio management. So most of my slides is from MIT Sloan MBA program. So I will link their um their resources in my description. First, I want to talk about two assets portfolio return and standard deviation, which I already uh had a detail in another video if you are interested. So basically, say if I hold two stocks in my portfolio, how can I uh, calculate the return? The return is basically is the equal to the weight of the each stocks, uh, and the uh portfolio standard deviation is equal to this formula. You can say this is their weight, uh, of the standard deviation, then. There's a very important element here is the covariance. Covariance is equal to the correlation coefficient times the two standard deviation. So they are playing very important role in your ah、uh, portfolio risk and the return. So here's the example. This is a two asset portfolio. Ah,、uh, Motorola and the GM. Say from. Nineteen sixty, uh, forty six, uh, to two thousand one, Motorola had a average monthly return of one point seven five percent, and the standard deviation is nine point seven three percent. GM had a average return of a one point zero eight percent, and the standard deviation of six point two three percent. Their correlation is zero point three seven. How would a portfolio of the two assets perform? So first, you have to see their expected return. Their expected return is equal to their weighted return. Then their ah、uh, standard deviation, which ah、uh, is the square root of the variance. So both the standard deviation and the variance and measure the risk of the portfolio. So you can calculate in this way. So here, uh, we just have to figure out what's the weight, uh, for each stock we want to hold. That's why here have a list. Say how what's the proportion you want to hold. You can hold everything is uh GM, or you hold everything is the uh Motorola. Some、uh, you can even hold, you can short GM, then uh buy more Motorola. So that's you can have different proportion. Let's say when you hold twenty five percent Motorola and the um uh twenty five percent Motorola and the seventy five percent the GM, they will give you return this one point two five percent return. Then your standard deviation will be six point zero one. So you can compare this return to the GM's return is higher than GM return. Then the uh standard deviation is lower than GM's standard deviation. So uh, it's better for you to hold them in a portfolio. If you plug all the returns, uh, returns and the standard deviation based on their weight. They will give you this line, right? They will give you this line, and yes, you can see if you only uh hold GM, one GM, everything. Let's say you put all your money in the GM. What's the return you gonna get? Your return is about here, and your risk is here. However, if you want to add a little bit of Motorola. To your portfolio, then you will move to uh this point. This point will tell you say I will give you higher return, and the risk will be reduced. So which means say you should never never hold the GM alone. You should always hold some GM and Motorola in order to increase your return, reduce your risk. That was two assets in the portfolio. 
How about I have a three stocks, three assets in the portfolio, right? So, uh, I have GM, IBM, and Motorola in the video, uh, in the uh, portfolio. So then I uh, can calculate the return. Is the weighted return uh, here? Then the their variance, which is the square of the devi standard deviation, uh, can calculate in this way. Is you can see here they say variance and the covariance. If GM with GM, then we'll give you uh basically a variance of the GM. IBM with IBM give you variance of IBM. Motorola with Motorola give you Motorola variance. This is the first three here. Then if you get a GM with IBM, they will give you covariance. Uh, then GM with Motorola, they will give you covariance uh, the two. So then this is, you have a three covariance here. So with all this information, you can calculate the portfolio uh, variance, the portfolio standard deviation. So then you, uh, once you have all the information, then you just uh, uh, have to um, proportion, figure out the proportion. Then you use a different proportion. Let's say you hold a 20% uh, uh, Motorola, 10% IBM, uh, then you 70% GM, that will give you a dot on the line here. So you change the proportion, then we'll move the dot on the line. So this line is based on the proportion. With the proportion, you hold the IBM, GM, and the Motorola. So this line basically tell you, say, I just hold, uh, you know, proportion, and then I can achieve a better return, a uh, lower, lower risk, better return. Let's look at the IBM. Say, if I only hold IBM, my risk is at a here, then my return is at a here. So if I just add a little bit GM and the Motorola here, I move my IBM, uh, my portfolio return on here, so same risk, I get a higher return. Or I change the proportion GM and Motorola in my portfolio, then I can and um, you know, move this dot to here. To here, what do you get? You get the same return, but your risk are reduced significantly. So basically tell you, you should never, never hold individual stock. You should always hold them in a portfolio to achieve that on this line. <coughs> here they say it's efficient frontier. Uh, obviously, you want to go here because here give you the higher return. Higher return, less risk, right? You don't want to go here is lower return. Then go here, you will go get lower return, higher risk, uh, um, higher risk, lower return. So you want to always go here is lower risk, uh, higher return lower risk on here. That's called efficient frontier. Then we talk about this, I mean, it's very, uh, very important for you to figure out the proportion you want to hold and then uh, get the best return and uh, uh, lower risk. So that's why we want to uh, stop for a while. We want to look at the capital market line. Capital market line. This is the formula for the uh capital market line. So basically, say if I hold a portfolio, let's say a stock portfolio S and P. So then I uh, uh hold a little bit of T bill um risk basically risk portfolio and the riskless assets. So then I get a line. Get a straight line, so this is very interesting. You mix your uh, risk uh, portfolio with a uh, riskless um, assets, then you'll get straight line on here. 
So this line called capital market line. Then why that line matters? So basically, say if I want to hold a、uh, Motorola, this portfolio is is very important for me to find out the. the I want to find out this dot, which is the proportion I want to hold. How can I find this dot? Well, apparently they tell you if you tangent with this uh capital market line actually, uh yeah capital mar market line, um, which you assume this one is the market, so this will give you the best uh. The dot, the most effective dot, give you highest return, lower uh, uh, lower risk. This is called tangency portfolio. So the tangency portfolio, if there's there's a riskless uh T bill, and uh, uh all investors should hold exactly the same stock portfolio. All the efficient um. All the efficient portfolio are combination of the riskless assets and a unique portfolio of the stocks called the tangency portfolio. Ah,、uh, in this case, efficient frontier become the straight line. Then the slope, the the slope of this tangency portfolio is equal to sharp ratio. Let's look at、uh, what's the sharp ratio. Sharp ratio is the portfolio return minus risk-free rate, then divided by the portfolio standard deviation. Then you look at the this line, uh, capital market line. So you just simply say you move these elements around. You move the this one, uh, risk-free rate to this way. You divide by the Uh, divided by the portfolio standard deviation give you the uh slope. That's why the sharp ratio is the slope of the tangency portfolio, uh slope, right? Uh, also the little thing you need uh know alpha is the measure of the mutual funds risk adjusted portfolio. The tangency portfolio also maximize the funds alpha. The key point here is diversification reduces risk. The standard deviation of the portfolio is always less than the average standard deviation of the individual stock in the portfolio. Of、uh, the in the in the uh diversified portfolio, covariance among stocks are more important than the individual variance. Only systematic risk matters. Investors should try to hold the portfolios on the efficient tier. Ah,、uh, this portfolio maximizes expected return for the given level of the risk. With riskless assets, all the investors should hold the tangency portfolio. This portfolio maximizes the trade-off between the risk and the expected return. And again, most of these slides are from the、uh, MIT Sloan、uh, MBA program.